conditions that you see on the screen. Okay, here is the complete numerical example to demonstrate how to use the multi-dimensional uh, uh, gradient method. A lot of time people refer to it as a steepest descent or steepest ascent algorithm. Suppose you are given a function small f that have two variables x and y and that function f is given as x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus 4 for example but it could be any complicated function or it could be involved with more than two variables it doesn't matter here to simplify the discussion I assume we have only two variables x and y so according to the theory that I presented to you earlier the first thing we do is we have to come up with the initial estimate the initial guess of the solution so for the initial estimate of the solution we say x at iteration 0 that having two components x at iteration 0 and y at iteration 0 then we go x is a vector you have two components x and y so suppose at iteration 0 x equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. That is our initial guess. So with that initial guess, x equal to 2, y equal to 1. How do we proceed the algorithm so that it will help us to the optimum solution? So let's go to the next slide. As you can see on the screen, for the given function f, you can calculate the gradient or the derivative very easily. For example, for the function f is equal to x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus 4. That function is given. You can calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to x by holding y like a constant. And the answer will be 2x plus 2. Similarly, you can calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to y by holding f uh, x is a constant. Okay, take the partial derivative of f with respect to y, assuming x is constant, the answer is just 2y. So, del f over del x and del f over 2y together will give you the gradient of the function f. If you want to evaluate that gradient at a particular location, x equal to 2, y equal to 1, which is your initial guess, then all you have to do is, whenever you see x, you replace by 2. Whenever you see y, you replace by 1. That will give you the gradient of f, the gradient of f, equal to 6i plus 2j right because the first value 6 is associated with the x variable which is related to the unit vector i because i is a unit vector along the x direction so that is the gradient of f which is a vector that have two components so here is the thing that you need to know according to my lecture I say you know the initial guess, x at iteration i. The first question you ask yourself is, how do I find out the best direction to travel from the known point xi? The answer is, that should be the gradient of the objective function f that you just calculated. So you know the direction to travel already, that is delta f. The next question you say is, Along that direction, gradient of f that you just found, how far in that direction you should travel? That means you have to figure out what should be the step size h in here. What should be the value of the step size h? Because this step size h will tell you how far in the direction of delta f you should travel to the next improved solution. So at this moment, you don't know the step size h yet. But at least you can compute like this. You say the next solution, 
which is the improved solution. It is equal to the previous solution at iteration i, in this case mean 2, 1, come from your initial guess, plus the step size h that you don't know yet, time the best direction to travel, which is the gradient of the objective function f that you just calculate is 6 and 2. So if you combine together, you can see the first term will be equal to 2 plus 6h and the second component will be 1 plus 2h. That will give you the new direct and uh, the new improved solution x at iteration i plus 1. But keep in mind you don't know the step size h yet. So in the next iteration this is what I suggest you to do, okay? So let's let me clear this whiteboard a little bit and then I will explain to you what should you do in the next step. You see based on our analysis so far, we know that the next improved solution which I call x at iteration i plus 1, it is given by the last formula that you see on the screen. Now that formula have two components. The first component right here obviously related to the x variable and the second component here related to the y variable. So what you should do the next step is you substitute the objective function f that you see in the first equation whenever you see uh, x you will replace by 2 plus 6h whenever you see x in the objective function you will replace by 2 plus 6h which is the new x value in the next iteration and also similarly whenever you see y in the objective function you will replace by 1 plus 2h which is the new value for y so after you substitute x and y in the objective function by the value of 2 plus 6h and 1 plus 2h respectively you can see very clearly that your objective function f now can be expressed in terms of the step size h only. And let's see, is that true in the next few slides, okay? So after you do that, you will see in the next few slides, you will see in the next few slides, it looks like this. You see, like I told you, whenever you see x, you replace by 2 plus 6h. Whenever you see x, you replace by 2 plus 6h. And whenever you see y in the objective function, you replace by 1 plus 2h. Now, the objective function f evaluated at the new point, new improved solution, x at iteration i plus 1. It is given, expressed in terms of the step style h. So, if you don't mind, all of this thing in here, together, I give it a new name, I call it is a function g, which is expressed in terms of h. Now, that is the good news because now when you compute the function f at the new design point, which already incorporate the best direction to travel, which is the gradient of f, now f, or we call g, is only an expression in terms of one variable h, which is the step size. So, to answer the question, what should be the step size h 
in order to minimize the objective function f along the direction of the gradient that you just calculated? The answer is very simple because now f or g is only a function of one variable h you should be able to figure out the optimum solution in this case very easily because it is only a function of one variable h which means you can use either golden section golden section search method or you can use Newton method in order to figure out the optimum solution of one variable h. Or in this case, to make it even simpler, because this function is only a quadratic function of h, we can find out the optimum solution, the minimum value of f, easily by simply setting the first derivative of g with respect to h equal to zero, and we can all see that the derivative of 40h squared is 80h. The derivative of 40h is 40. You set the derivative equal to 0. So from that, you can figure out the so-called optimum step size, which I call h star is equal to negative 0 0.5. So what does that mean? What it means is that if you look on the previous slide, you can see you already know how to calculate the best direction to travel, which is the gradient of the objective function. To answer the next thing, which is how do you find out the step size h? <coughs> and the answer is the step size h, you can calculate it is negative 0 0.5. You can do it analytically or using golden section or Newton, it doesn't matter. So now, since you know the step size, the optimum step size, you can see if you go back to the previous slide, if you just simply replace this h by the calculated optimum value, which is negative 0 0.5, that should give you the next or the improved solution at iteration xi plus 1. So for example, 6 times negative 0 0.5 is minus 3 plus 2, that would be 1. Oh no, minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. And then this will be 0. So in other words, the new improved solution at iteration i plus 1 will be negative 1 and 0. That should be the new improved solution. As you will see in the next few slides, okay? So let's see what happened to the next few slides after you figure out the step.